what are arrows actually arrows are known as variable constructs but what are variable constructs it doesn't tell us anything about arrows so we talked about structures earlier in our lesson series but structures why would we use arrows when we have structures arrows are totally different but they do store structures inside them or they can store three dimensions of values inside them so let's have a look at an example before we go on coding with our arrows so suppose because the new year eve is coming up why don't we use this example in our program or to explain our program so before we go to celebrate any festival we might go on shopping for new clothes new shoes new presents or new gifts for our relatives or parents or siblings so the first thing that we go before shopping is to create a list and when we create a list we start by counting it from one so the first thing that we might go on buying will be a shoe and the second thing we can assume to be presents for our parents for our relatives for our colleagues and any other people whom we want to wish a new a good new year to them so uh, the third thing that we can assume is we can buy new clothes for ourselves and the fourth thing that we can add as an example is that we can buy suppose you want to buy a new car for it uh, for the new year you, you want to buy a BMW or you want to buy a Mercedes whatever it is so what we see in here or the main focus of our discussion in here is that we are using a numerical value to using a numerical value on our items in a programming context this is called an index so what does an index represent inside an array an index when we use it inside the program we can call it using the index of the array so when we call one suppose we call one inside our program the program or the compiler will interpret that we are actually referring to the value inside this index one so we are referring to the value shoes so it would go on printing this value shoes on the browser rather than printing this one but we are actually calling this shoes by its numerical index one now arrows have an interesting part unlike structures or lists arrows can store values in three orders the first dimension in one D it can then go on storing values in 2d or two dimension then the last thing that it can do is to store values in 3d or three dimensions what this dimensions mean is that they are actually assigning spaces inside your memory inside your computer when we go on storing values in 1d we are actually storing a single value inside our 1d suppose we store these shoes inside our 1d value we are storing this value in 1d but if we want to be more specific about this shoe suppose you want to buy a new Nike football boot to play soccer or football because you love the game so you go on placing this Nike thing or the name of the company Nike inside it and we are actually making it a two dimension two dimension array the second this we are then going to store this Nike value inside the second dimension you also further go on specifying to the program that this boots needs to be the you know the first the first class I don't I, I don't have any idea about their boots but let's assume that you want it to be customized you want it to be made according to your wishes not the thing that they sell uh, that they design you want your design to be produced by them so it must be customized so we want our custom design for ourselves so we store the specific value of custom inside our 3d 3 third dimension so this goes on storing the value inside the third dimension in in the computer memory each index is actually storing a value inside a memory inside our computer and when we store these values they take up memory spaces and we have got several built-in array functions that can do that for you without even having to go on printing all of them what I mean by this is that cold fusion has got several built-in functions like array insert at array delete array clear array length which goes on inserting the value if you want to change that suppose you want to change the company name from Nike to Adidas then you can use the array delete or array insert at function and this will automatically change the value inside the memory rather than you going on and erasing or modifying the code by yourself so why don't we have a look at an example that we create 
for our web page so the first thing that we're going to look at is how to use structures how to use query string and how to at the end use looping to output all the questions that we produce on our page we're going to combine all three of these features using our arrays so let's get started the first thing that we need is to have a new page obviously and let's save this as array.cfm and let us start with the usual CF script tags and because we're going to work with question we need a parameter so this parameter will hold the URL dot FAQ suppose we create a FAQ section or frequently asked question section for our web page and we name it as url.faq and we assign a value default value the array is going to be referred using our indexes so we need the default value to be an index too so this default will actually produce the first array on our browser and let's also use the type attribute and assign any so that it can produce any values of any data type and let's finish this off now we are going to declare a new variable called faq and this variable is going to assign or create array arrays for us so to create an arrow we need the array new function we need to pass a parameter telling it whether we are intending to create a first dimension second dimension or a third dimension array for this part i'm going to use the first dimension error to make it simple to keep the program simple because we're going to use all those concepts of looping all those concepts of questioning in one script so let's insert values in our script let's insert values I inside this FAQ using structures so the first value will be inserted using the index of one and now we are going to create a structure using the struct new function so let us assign this struct new function to our variable FAQ so what we have done in here is that the first thing that we created was a variable called FAQ and we assigned the function array new with a parameter of one so this is telling the compiler that we are going to create an we are going to create an array called FAQ this FAQ will store values will store several values inside it with the index of one so the first index will hold several values will hold structures inside this faq variable don't worry i'll explain this in more detail after we finish this script off and we have a look at it at the browser so the first faq will hold a variable called question inside it because this is a structure we can store variables inside it if you still don't remember or if you have forgotten what a structure is please refer back to my uh, video where I've talked about the structures in chapter 1 so let us create this question assign a string to it so the first question we're going to look at is what is your profession you can choose something else for yourself so let's finish this off using this semicolon we're also going to assign a corresponding answer to this question and everything is going to be stored inside this FAQ first index so the answer will also hold a string of suppose programmer now we have created two variables inside our FAQ array inside our structure FAQ1 array so these two variables are going to be stored inside this first index and this first index is going to be stored inside the array called FAQ now let us create another structure you can go creating as many structures as you want so the second structure is going to be stored inside the second array or the second index of the FAQ array this is going to be the question we're going to declare this as structure first so this is going to be struct new and now we can 
go on assigning variables to this second index and assign values another string value to this question so the second question will be what is your name perhaps and it will also have a corresponding answer for this tutorial we're going to create three arrays so we have already created two we are going to create another array that's going to store another question with a corresponding answer so this answer variable is going to store my name so I think you can recognize or you can see clearly that this structures inside this distinct arrays are storing same sort of variables with the same sort of name but when we go on printing them they won't clash or they won't cause any dilemma inside the program because each of them are indexed or addressed through their through their array indexes so this question this question inside the second array is unique because it's the it's stored inside the second array whereas the first question inside the first array is stored inside the first index so they are going to be referred in using the indexes so these names won't have a problem you can use as many arrays as, as you want or you can use as many structures inside your arrays but be sure not to use too many because it's going to overload your program as you go on consuming more and more memory spaces as you create more and more arrays so we're going to create another array the third array of our program and this will be a structure too So the third question we can write is where do you live and the corresponding answer shall be let me write my city name Dhaka and let's save this for now and we have three arrows we have created three arrows and each have the distinct indexes and this distinct indexes store their own variables with the same variable names although this won't clash because their indexes are different now what we're going to do is to we need a way to output this on our page on our browser in the first list or in the first structures example we looked at how to use the CF output to output our values on the browser but why not we change it and use it use the right output method or the right output function inside our script so let's use this right output let's finish this off and let's use this 